Yo, what's up everyone? This is Tokyo Day 2. Yeah, I just woke up from the Port Hotel. Um, slept like a baby actually. Uh, it was really good. It was really, really good. Got myself a cup of coffee. And today we're going to the Meiju Shrine. So yeah, I gotta take the train line, take a couple of stops. Shouldn't be too long, about 10 minutes there. But there's a lot less people on the street this time of the morning. It's about 9 a.m. So I purchased the Suica card, which is basically an oyster card in Japan, which allows me, I put some money on it, and allows me to travel on any underground, any bus, pretty much anything. And most importantly, I can finally use these vending shops. As you can see, they only accept the Suica cards. And that's going to be quite convenient in the future. Alright, so I'm currently in the Takeshita Street, which is like this super hip area. There's a lot of young people walking around, and actually mostly kids. I can see a lot of school uniforms. There are loads of small little shops uh, that sell really, really cool outfits. I believe it's for teenagers, as I see like loads of people wearing them and actually visiting those shops here. But the most important aspect of the street is the smell of the sweet, sweet pancakes that is filling every single little space on the street. Now I'm definitely going to go to the shop behind me which sells rainbow colored candy floss. I know this is bad, I'm still full from yesterday's meal. Uh, I haven't had breakfast so candy floss is probably not the right way to start the day. But screw it, you know, yellow. Let's do it. doesn't fall down, it's really tacky at the moment, I did it with one hand. But I want to try it out, it's, this bad boy is actually different flavors. Um, this is the smallest they come in. I saw the large one and it's ridiculous, it's like, it's like half of my body. But yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, it tastes like regular cotton candy. Let's try a different flavor. So the flavors are actually different. The top one is like bubble gum. The middle one is orange. I'm guessing the bottom one is gonna be mint. Yeah, yeah, it's mint. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so I'm at the entrance of the Meiji Shrine. It has this really cool entrance, like that. There's a wooden arc built around it, and uh, already like behind it, there's this forest and the atmosphere here is incredible suddenly you see this like the bustling city of Tokyo like just down there with the buildings and a lot of noise and in here you have this, this peaceful part with a very dense forest around here so these large wooden gates behind me I call Tori and this one behind me shows the entrance to where Emperor Meiji where his shrine is this structure behind me is the tallest in whole of Japan. All right, so I'm currently seated at the Emperor's Garden. This is one of the oldest structures in the whole of the major shrine. The place is ridiculously peaceful. There's a pond to the right with the typical Japanese fishes uh, swimming around. And there's a sort of rear kind up there. I feel like this place really gives you some energy because everyone is trying to be really quiet and it is extremely peaceful here. This garden was actually built during the Edo period before Tokyo was called Tokyo by a different emperor. And yeah, this is the predecessor of what the major shrine is now. The major shrine is sort of in a different location, about 200 meters away from here. I finally reached the shrine itself, it's right behind me, but before uh, you have to go and wash your hands for good luck with uh, some special water. 
Uh, it's a whole procedure. You have to take a cup and then pour it all over your hands. Some people drink it. I don't think I'm going to try, but yeah. I just visited the major shrine, pretty lit. Did a couple of offerings here and there, wrote some prayers, wrote some wishes. Just wandering the gardens now, I mean, everything, the trees are so tall, you know, the, the sun is peeking through them, it's really beautiful around here. I'm actually quite surprised by how wild this area feels, you know, it's right in the center of Tokyo. And uh, they preserved it really, really well. My next spot is the Yugogi Park. Uh, there's a lot of people here just relaxing, reading books and chilling. Um, I'm also gonna sit down, kind of plan where I want to eat next. As you can figure out, this is pretty much a food blog. Um, something I want to point out is just how incredible the architecture is in Japan. Although some buildings, I mean, you can see that they're modern, but they kind of maintain that old traditional style. It's difficult to explain, but even the panel buildings, they look old even though they've just been newly built and i think this has been done intentionally in order to preserve the authenticity of the city stay hydrated <laughs> down on Matasando Street and I think I found a really lit place to eat. We're gonna try some gyoza today and this place got really good reviews on Google and it isn't a lonely planet guys they suggested I should try it. One thing I've discovered is that quite a few food places in Tokyo they don't accept cards it's cash only and the problem with that is unfortunately my Monzo card doesn't seem to work in every single ATM. I've just tried three different banks and none of them work. I'm gonna try 7-Eleven and see how it goes now. Yo, 7-Eleven's got my back. Got my dollar dollar yen, yo. One love for 7-Eleven. Whilst trying to find it, I actually stumbled across another hipster looking Camden Street. Lots of weird stuff going on. People selling hipster clothing outside. It's all very, very Western influenced actually down there. There's a lot of cool like hip hop clothes. Alright, so the place is really cramped here. Um, I ordered two sets of dumplings and uh, an appetizer with some bean sprouts. Okay, the food has arrived. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna try one of the dumplings now. The bean sprouts arrived, arrived earlier. I didn't really want to film them. It's nothing special. But yeah, let's go for the bean dumpling. Because I came out. So fresh, super freshly made. I'll definitely add some sauce. There is, I can see some spicy sauces, some soy sauce in front of me. Let's try the other one. I'm being suggested that I should make the sauce, so we will do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Alright, so the dumplings were amazing. There was a really nice lady next to me. She was like, fan, why are you not using the sauce? Yeah, obviously the three sauces, they elevated the whole situation. I think I'm losing my voice because it's really spicy. I wanted to go to the Nezu Museum, but it's already around like 4.30. It closes at 5. I don't think I'll manage. And I'm kind of getting a little bit tired, so... Probably gonna walk down the main street a couple of times and then go back to the pod hotel and chill for a bit. So I took a little downtime, took a little nap, decided to go out, go to the Shibuya crossing and show you the madness that happens there. 
and it turned out to rain. And apparently, according to Apple weather, it's going to rain for the next four hours with like 60% probability. I'm going to go get some meat going. So yeah, but man, the rain sucks. It's really heavy as well. Look, everyone's wearing umbrellas. All right, I go to the state place, but there's a bit of a queue behind me. Uh, it closes in 55 minutes. I really hope I make it because look at this. Oh, yes. That's what we want. That's what we're going to get. Okay, so I'm in this really small restaurant in Tokyo. Uh, there's only nine seats here. And uh, I'm going to be eating tonkatsu beef. Uh, it's steak, which is breaded. And, uh, I don't know. By the looks of it, it looks incredible. It's all incredible on the plate. Uh, you're supposed to grill it on the little stick that they give you in front. This is the tonkatsu beef that I'm talking about. This is some soup that came with it, some rice, two types of sauces. I think these are like pickled yam or something like that. And then I'm going to use this stove, I'm going to put the meat on it in order to finish cooking it. Mm. 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 That beef just melted in my mouth in like two seconds. It is perfectly marble. I'm gonna try a little bit of the salad if I'm gonna put some more sauce on it, so I'm gonna do that. Cheers. Yeah, it did really good. That was incredible. If you wanna check it out, it's called Gyukatsu Motomura. And the steak was just melting in my mouth. I mean, I'm sorry I couldn't film properly, but it's really cramped space. There's only nine seats. And as soon as I got my tripod out, there were people that kind of were placed in the seat while my tripod was standing. Uh, the rain has kind of stopped, it's sprinkling still, but I am not gonna leave the Shibuya region without seeing the Shibuya crossing. I've just reached the Hachiko statue. And although I've never seen the movie, I know what it's about, and it's quite sad. There he is. I'm finally at the Shibuya crossing, probably the most notable crossing in the world. It looks like madness, there's cars going everywhere, there's people queuing up. There's not actually that many people. I really hoped it was going to be better. There's a Starbucks right there, which has really good viewing seats. So I'm thinking maybe I should do a time lapse down there. The rain really ruined it. Crossing the Shibuya crossing. Look, there's so many people. Everyone's going in different directions. <laughs> it's madness, I don't know how it works. Alright, a little bit disappointed because I had to queue up for like 25 minutes in order to get the spot. And then because of rain, there's not actually that many people around the Shibuya crossing. But uh, I'll come back here again. I'm gonna go home now. So let's finish this vlog and yeah, keep it real. See you tomorrow.